Hey, what's happening out there? This is Halftime Prep Talk. We're at Boyd County Baseball's Addington Field, where the 64th District Tournament will take place next week. We'll get into district tournaments here in a little bit. We're going to introduce our guests, Brandon Ramsey and Jacob Barnwell. They'll be joining us soon. Zach Clemmy, I'm Aaron Snyder. As always, HTPT is sponsored by Fannin Automotive Family. Check out the Chick-fil-A ticker across the bottom of your screen for district tournament schedules. First, we're going to go with out of left field. We're going to talk tennis. 16th region and 15th region tennis just wrapped up last week. And some of the familiar faces, Cole McCreary won for Lawrence County. Uh, he's, he's a guy that's been a part of five region titles now. As a team, the boys for the Lawrence County uh, Bulldogs have won seven straight region titles in tennis. Uh, the girls have won five straight. And then you look at 16th region, Robbie Crick of Ashland, uh, a freshman, won boys singles. And Madison Hill, an eighth grader from Greenwich County, won girls singles. So uh, pretty impressive from the young guns mm -hmm. of the region on the, on the uh, tennis court. Uh, David Bush has dominated this region for so long, and now he's off to play collegiately. And uh, it looks like some of the younger uh, guys will, will – a bright future in this area certainly will battle it out in Lawrence County. I mean – um, as far as the 15th region goes, they're very good at tennis. They're pretty good at baseball, soccer, basketball, football. They're one of the more complete schools maybe athletically in the region. Interesting. Yeah, Russell uh, Doubles team, Kirsten Hensley and Macy Ferguson, will try to double up on state titles this coming weekend in Lexington. So keep an eye on the independent for coverage of state tennis. Uh, region track is also this weekend, so a lot of exciting things coming up, uh, including softball and baseball. Uh, district tournaments and those those will begin Monday uh, we're going to get into some of that and covering the bases but first we're going to go let's play two and hand out our game balls Zach I'll let you go first well we don't often give this to a coach that we've done it occasionally but uh, Raceland baseball coach Randy Vanderhoof won his 500th game or should say Raceland won its 500th game under Vanderhoof this past week uh, against Lawrence County and um, it was a testament to his longevity certainly but uh, you know he Raceland and, and that program does as well as anybody in this region with taking what they have and kind of maximizing what they have. And, you know, they're a, a threat just about every year to knock somebody off in the district tournament. And it's been a few years since they've made it to the region, but with what they have, it's, it's not a foregone conclusion, certainly, in that first round game with Greenup County that uh, they can't certainly make things interesting there. So uh, congrats to, to Raceland and to Coach Vanderhoof for hitting that milestone. Uh, his first year was 1987, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I talked to him uh, <laughs> for the story this week in the Independent, and he said, uh, "Man, that's been a long time. That's a lot of presidents." I he, probably shouldn't say this, but that was before I was born. <laughs> that was I was. I one. hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> I, I was one, and it was Ronald Reagan's term. If anybody, second yeah. term, if anybody was wondering. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to go with Hannah Hunt, the eighth grader from Greenup County, uh, the softball player who is not very well known yet, but she might be here soon if she keeps hitting like she did against Lawrence County. Had a walk-off double in the seventh inning against Lawrence County on tu uh, Tuesday night, on Monday night, excuse me, and it was a 4-3 win for Greenup County. And, uh, you know, she was known as the little sister of Jacob and Jared Hunt, the baseball players for Greenup County, but now she might make a name for herself. Of course. So. All right, it's time for the distinctive specialties covering the bases here from the cheap seats on the third base side of Addington Field at Boyd County High School. We're going to talk about the three most dangerous non-favorites in upcoming district tournaments. I'll let you start. Let's go first base. Who's one of the one of the three teams that we're going to talk about? Well, you stay right here at the, the, the side of the 64th district tournament and uh, Ashland baseball. Uh, is a team that you know they could easily lose to Fairview in the first round. They split with them in the regular season, but they've shown uh, played Boyd twice and lost both times. But one time, uh, an extended comeback and got within. Actually, took the lead on on Boyd late, which is a prohibitive favorite in this district, and uh, led late. And Boyd came back and got up and got them 11 to 10. But uh, Ashland's record is not good. It's five and 17, I believe, at the at this taping. But um, they, uh, you know, they've proven that they're capable of when they play well. And if you make mistakes, Ashland will, will capitalize on them and take advantage. Um, they've really struggled more than almost any other team around here with the weather and not being able to get in enough games and struggling to progress because of that. But when they, you know, when they're hustling and they're playing hard, then they're a dangerous help. 
Uh, I just picked a player from this team to, as a recipient of my game ball, Greenup County Softball. Once again, I think they're going to be dangerous heading into the 63rd District Tournament. And I think you still label Russell the favorite there. So I think it's fair to say that Greenup's, the, I'm not going to say an underdog, but a non-favorite. Right. Um, you know, Raceland uh, actually knocked off Greenup a few weeks back. Mm -hmm. uh, had, had kind of an offensive explosion where they scored, I believe, 16 runs in the game. And that kind of that kind of got Raceland going, but here recently, Greenup County is showing signs once again of, of being a threat uh, in the upcoming postseason. I think you know they have a strong lineup, a strong senior leadership, and they have Brooke Johnson in the circle. She's been pretty solid throughout her career. Coach Eric Keaton likes to call her the workhorse. So I think Greenup County softball is a team to uh, to take note of. Johnson solid and Maddie Green is as good a player as anybody this side of Megan Hensley in this region. So uh, they can hit the ball a little bit too. Uh, to wrap up, uh, looking at third base, uh, Russell baseball is, is having a pretty good year. This is their best year uh, in terms of wins since 2006. I and mean, that was a team that won 25 and 13. But uh, again, you look at Greenup County is the favorite, if not in the region, certainly at least in that district. Uh, a very good baseball team, but Russell gave them all they wanted two nights in a row, and uh, Russell's playing well right now, and, and they're capable of making things interesting in that district as well. It's really, uh, we say it so often, it's almost cliche in the 63rd district, any team could beat any other team on any given night, and that's not held true so far this year because it's been mostly chalk, but those are those are four teams that are capable of making things interesting against anybody. Now, one thing's for sure, it's going to get very interesting here in the next couple of weeks, district tournaments. Uh, you know, abound this coming week and, and then the region tournament after that. We'll probably be right back here, not at Addington Field, but on your uh, computer screen or wherever you're watching, uh, you know, to talk about region tournament after the draw. Hmm. All right, uh, we're going to bring in, we're going to go down the dugout, yeah. Zach, and we're going to bring in uh, Boyd County coach Brandon Ramsey and senior catcher Jacob Barnwell. All right, here at Addington Field, joined by Boyd County baseball coach Brandon Ramsey on HTPT. Coach Ramsey, thanks for joining us. No problem. And, uh, you know, you've been the coach here since 2000, head coach since 2009, uh, played here, uh, played at Marshall. Um, do you ever think back to the, the old playing days? I'm not sure I can remember that far back, to be honest <laughs> with you. I think uh, actually this year would be my 25th anniversary on, or a, a class reunion for high school. Wow. So. You know, I've been out a long time, and, and it's just, you've been through so much. I started coaching here in 1994, and, uh, you know, I've always enjoyed it, enjoyed being around the kids and stuff. So, uh, don't remember a whole lot other than the uh, injuries I, you know, had when I used to play that still kind of bothered me a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's been a good run. Uh, 2011 and 2014, you guys accomplished 16th region titles. Um, was there a common quality between those two teams? Uh, I think for the most part they were older teams. You know, they had a lot of upperclassmen, uh, a lot of smart, hardworking kids who, you know, got into the program early and developed their way up through, you know, did what the coaches asked them to do. You know, we play and, and ask certain things of kids and, you know, a lot of kids just bought into it and, uh, you know, kind of progressed and, and compete and went out and was able to win region championships. Do you think this team this year has that same quality? Well, I think so, mainly just because it's a lot of the returning kids from last year. I mean, they was all three-year starters last year. There were four-year starters this year. You know, we have, uh, this is the most juniors and seniors we've had on one team in a long, long time. And, you know, there's nothing that can really take the place when you have those upperclassmen. Did you expect this lineup to be so potent, one through nine? And it starts with Jordan Smith and ends with Sam Purcelli, and, uh, you know, opponents really don't get a break. No, uh, and we thought going into the season that would be our, our strong point for the team. Uh, we knew we was probably lacking a little bit in pitching depth, you know, especially that top-level guys. But uh, we knew offensively, especially with uh, most of our guys returning off last year's team, that, that we should have been able to score runs. I don't think we've... You could really imagine, you know, how many that we was going to score. I know at one time it was almost nine and a half runs a game, yeah. uh, and that's a lot of runs. And uh, it, it's been good. Uh, we're very persistent at the plate. You know, we have a certain way we approach our at bats, and, and we, you know, we, we focus on at bat to at bat, and to continue to put pressure. You know, and I think the big thing is is the depth we have within our program right now. We have a lot of guys that hit really well. And, you know, we tell them all the time that, you know, if you give bats away, you don't get more bats. So I think that 
every time they go to the plate after that, that they have that focus because, you know, everybody wants to play and everybody wants to continue to be in that lineup. And they know that if they go up there and they give four bats, then they might not be in there the next night. All right. And you got a good mix of lefties and righties in there. And, you know, one guy that's really producing for you is Dylan Grimm. 57 RBIs. That's yeah. just an astounding number. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you score that many runs, you figure somebody's been knocking them in. <laughs> I, I know he has to be getting close to the, the score record. I'm not quite sure why. I know it was, I think it was in the 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a lot. It's a lot of RBIs, especially when you think of uh, 57 RBIs and we played 32 games. So yeah. that's almost, uh, well, not quite two a game, but well over one and a half. And, and that's amazing. You put that into a major league season. Yeah. And you're talking about a guy with over 200. So, yeah. uh, you know, he, he really has a knack for getting those guys home. And it helps when, you know, he's got uh, Jacob and Jordan in front of him who are on base a lot. And even once we flip the lineup, you have Zane, you know, mm -hmm. who's had a good year and been on base a lot. So Almost like an additional leadoff it, with him. Well, that's kind of the way we plan our lineup. Yeah. You know, I mean, he probably with his numbers should bat up higher than he does. But, you know, we like him in the nine because when you flip, then it's like, you know, Zane's a leadoff, Jordan's a two, Jacob's a three, Dylan's a four. But that also allows Jacob and Dylan to hit in the first inning, you know, guaranteed. So. Exactly. You know, there's a reason behind that, but it, it does set up that lineup play. Dylan Grimm, uh, you know, it, what's his status on the mound? I know he pitched this past weekend, and he's he's key for you there as well. He's he's feeling much better. You know, we check in on him all the time. Uh, you know, he's got a little stretching program, strengthening program he's on now. He could have probably pitched earlier, but, you know, when he was in the middle of the season, we didn't see a lot of point to, to push him. So we just backed off and let him rest. We DH'd him there for a while. He wasn't doing a lot of throwing. And uh, we're slowly progressing him back in. We're going to try to make another start uh, this week and uh, probably a few innings next week, just depending on how he feels, and hopefully have him ready for a, you know, a good size outing once we get to the recent tournament. Uh, Jacob Barnwell, who's going to join us here in just a little bit, like you said, he's batting two in the lineup. He's uh, been an outstanding catcher. Obviously, he's signed with Ohio State. Could he be a draft pick? I think so. I think so. You know, he's had a lot of interest. You know, he, he's gotten himself out to uh, showcases where these, you know, professional scouts get to see him. You know, I know from the, you know, attention that I've gotten for him this year, you know, been a lot of guys emailing me wanting to know his status, wanting to know about BP four games, you know, if he's in the lineup, which, you know, of course he is. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, we'll just have to say you never know. I mean, the a lot of times when you get this close to the draft, a lot of these teams get real hush-hush with what they're planning on doing, but I definitely think it's a possibility. Jacob, you know, according to his standards, kind of had a down year last year as a junior, but, man, he's rebounded as a senior. He's batting about 500, and did you notice a, maybe a change in his demeanor or his approach or anything like that? I just think he was relaxed. I know last year as a junior, he had just verbally committed to Ohio State. and You know, we struggled a little bit more offensively last year and uh, had him in the three-hole. And just probably a lot of pressure on himself. I think some of my juniors this year, well, junior and a sophomore, who batted down the order this year and got moved into the middle are kind of finding that out a little bit. It's tough when you bat in the middle of the order because you get a lot more attention. You know, they pitch to you a lot more careful. I think that the good thing about the, even when he struggled last year, he would still take his walks. He, he, he didn't get out of the strike zone swinging the pitches. He still got on base a lot. You know, was able to be productive. Uh, you know, this year he's, he definitely stepped it up. Uh, all right, I'm going to create a scenario for you. Game one of the of the 16th region tournament, uh, you guys, let's say you go into the 64th district winners and you draw a team like East Carter, West Carter, or Russell, you know, a pretty dangerous opponent. Who's going to be on the mound? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it'll probably be a matchup thing. Uh, we'll have to take a look at it. I know we've uh, we've played all those teams. Well, we played two of those teams, and we've actually scouted West Carter at this point, so I think we feel pretty comfortable with uh, being able to approach them as far as the game. I mean, Dylan would be the first name that comes into your head. Uh, Braden Wyatt, uh, uh, Dylan Gifford, a sophomore that's mm -hmm. done really well for us. But, you know, we have a, a group of juniors there that will throw strikes and get after guys. So it, it'll be a tough decision. You know, it'll always uh, feel a bit better because we got Jacob, you know, there at the end. Sure. Yeah, and he, uh, how hard does he throw it now? He's up in the upper 80s, isn't he? Yeah, we've gotten him anywhere. I think last night he was 85, 86, which yeah. is actually one of the slower, you know, readings we've gotten on him. We've got him as high as 90 this year. Wow. So, you know, uh, it's tough for him. He, you know, he catches a lot. 
and we played six games last week, and he caught every one of them. And then you turn around, he catches Monday, and then starts the game Tuesday, and then we put him in the pitch. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've been trying to be real careful with him as far as his pitching, just so we could keep him behind the plate. But, you know, I think when you get into that uh, postseason play to where you got a lot more days off and guys are a little bit fresher, it'll be a little easier to put him out there, especially for a longer period of time. Uh, last week, uh, kind of an ugly situation in Pike County between Lawrence County and Pike County Central. Was a shortstop for Pike County Central facing assault charges because he hit the Lawrence County base runner, just taking his lead off second base during live action. Ha have you ever heard or, or seen anything like that before? You know, if you play college baseball, you see stuff like that a lot. But mm -hmm. in high school, not a whole lot. Uh, I know, um, actually, Coach Hamilton, when he was at West Jesmond, he was involved in one. Um, they get out of hand really quick. We had one here in the summer one time when I was young coaching. And uh, it's one of them things that you look up and everybody's off the bench. I know uh, you get into those district games like they was playing down there and they played back-to-back -back nights and, you know, there's a lot of emotion in them, a lot of energy and, and, you know, kids are, you know, real tense and especially if something doesn't go somebody's way and they're a little on edge and then somebody says something to them, and, you know, you got to learn to control your emotions, but you still got to understand that they're kids and they make mistakes and they do things they shouldn't or probably normally wouldn't, but, uh, you know, you put a kid in the heat of competition and sometimes, you know, they do things that they wouldn't normally do. Yeah, and, and usually there's only two umpires on the field and just a few coaches that have to kind of, you know, diffuse the situation. Yeah, and you're talking, I mean, I'm sure there was 30 to 35 kids, you know, out there involved. From my understanding is a lot of the other kids didn't get involved in it, which was That's good true. because that could have really, really got out of hand. I know there was a lot of kids that ran off the bench, but... You know, I mean, if their teammates out there and somebody's on top of them, they probably are going to do that. So it's never a good situation. You know, something you, you try to avoid, and hopefully, we, you know, you can keep control as a coach. But, you know, sometimes stuff happens and you just got to deal with it. Um, I know you, you still do a lot of uh, baseball throughout the offseason um, because of your coaching in the summer and things like that. Um, what, what other things do you kind of get involved in in the off season? I, I know you, you keep the girl, girls basketball scorebook. You, yeah. You've been doing that for a while. Been doing that for a while. Uh, we do a summer team. Uh, actually, I own a, a little baseball school. We don't do a whole lot with it. It's mainly for our Boy County kids. But we do have some instructors who give lessons to uh, you know some kids outside. Uh, we run our summer, summer programs through the Lockwood Baseball Academy. Uh, and usually in the fall, I start giving pitching lessons. I uh, do it mainly for, you know, kids in Boyd County. Uh, I've been able to fill up. I just go a couple days a week, you know, try to, uh, you know, get some relaxation over the course of, yeah. uh, you know, over the winter because, you know, once baseball starts, you know, around February, you know, you're pretty much going every day. But, you know, it keeps me involved. I enjoy doing it. Uh, kind of helps, you know, kids that will hopefully one day play here. And uh, you know maybe try to build for that future a little bit. Next week, right here at Addington Field, uh, 64th District Tournament. You guys will play Rose Hill on Monday um, to get things uh, kind of kicked off there. Uh, you know, district tournament, region tournament, state tournament. That that two or three week period there. I mean, there's there's not much more exciting than that than in high school baseball, is there? Well, no. This is what you you work all year for. You know, I was talking with Pete Frayler, our athletic director, last week, and I'm just like, let's get to districts. You know. Uh, you know, we're 32 games in at this point. I think we know where we're at as far as where everybody needs to be, batting order. You know, not totally sure about pitching rotation, but uh, we'll figure that out as we go. But, you know, we just need to make sure that we're ready for next week. This is what we play for. This is what we lift weights for in the fall and, you know, hit in the winter and, you know, get, get ready for it. Take our trip to Myrtle Beach to get better. And uh, hopefully, you know, come next week we'll be there. Coach, good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate it there. All right, Boyd County senior catcher Jacob Barnwell joins HTPD. Jacob, thanks for coming on the set. Thanks for having me. And we, uh, we've actually moved the set down here to Addington Field. Just talked to Coach Ramsey, and uh, you guys have had so much success down here and everywhere this season. I mean, you guys have been hitting the ball really well. I know you guys just kind of snapped a little skid that you're – uh, kind of suffered there in Lexington, but uh, but you guys have had a good season, and, and you personally, you're batting about 500, 515, somewhere around there, having a much better spring than you did last year. Not that your last year was bad, but it was kind of down to your standards, yeah. according to your standards. So, what's been the difference this year? Uh, basically, I came into this year and I just changed my plate approach, like all the mental side of it. 
and also it kind of helps that he put me in the two hole because that's where I play in the summer and stuff and I feel like that's a better spot for me because I mean it's more of a relaxed position and uh, I get to do what I like to do and see a lot of pitches and make the pitcher throw a pitch that I can hit instead of one that he wants me to hit so I basically just changed it to see more pitches I try to go out and see at least five pitches in a bat mm -hmm. is what I mainly strive for mm -hmm. so uh, last summer, uh, you played with the Huntington Hounds, and you're in several different All-Star events. You got to play at City Field, the home of the New York Mets. What was that experience like? Oh, it was amazing. Just the atmosphere there. It's like just a big ballpark. It's loud. Um, it's just a totally different atmosphere than just playing in just a regular stadium like this. And you'd think, I thought it was going to be real nervous and uh, it really wasn't that bad. I mean once you get out there on the field it's just like any other field. Yeah. The bases on the mound. So. It, it, did it feel huge though when you were standing there at home plate or did you just kind of block that out? For a minute it did until I kind of got used to it and then you kind of just focus in on the game and uh, good thing was there wasn't a full crowd like yeah. a usual Mets game was <laughs> yeah. but uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it seems like you just have those natural instincts behind the plate. Have, have you always just kind of possessed those? When did you realize, hey, I'm going to be a catcher? Well, when I first started baseball, I was an outfielder. And when I was in the outfield, I had a hard time paying attention in Little League because <laughs> no balls were hit there. And then to get me more into the game, my coach switched me to catcher. And then I, ever since then, I fell in love with it. So, I mean, I've always worked at it, and uh, it's kind of just – sort of come naturally to me but it's what I've always loved to do and I I think defense is the best part of the game I mean I like hitting I like driving in runs and all that but I just can't think of anything better to do than catch um, is there anything that you do in particular even at a young age to start preserving your knees as a catcher uh, sometimes I'll ice them and stuff after games but I mean most of the stuff I do I just run and then I do a lot of uh, like medicine balls and then just running and uh, just small stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I work out and stuff over the off season with Coach Ramsey and his workout programs. But most of the stuff I do, it's not real strenuous and it doesn't really bother my knees too bad. Mm -hmm. But especially when we get to Lexington and stuff and we have two or three games a day and stuff, that kind of gets rough at that third game. But uh, really the best thing I know to do is just ice them. Pitching wise, I mean, you hum it in there, high 80s, sometimes hit 90. Um, you know, is that how, how much do you enjoy pitching? Because a lot of times, you know, they use you in a relief role. Uh, you come in and close out some games, things like that. So your in innings are kind of limited this year. You're probably between 15 and 20, like we were talking about. How much do you enjoy being on the mound? Well, as much as I love catching, it's also fun to get out there on the mound and just try something new every once in a while and actually throw the ball. And uh, it's fun. Sometimes it's it's a different different spot and everything, so it was tough to get used to because I never really started pitching until I was a sophomore here. So uh, it was different. It took me a year or two to kind of get used to it, but it's getting better now. I mean, at times my arm kind of hurts and stuff, but especially after a game, I caught a whole game and I come in for the seventh inning for a close. It might take me a better two to get used to, but. Uh, after that, once I start feeling a groove and stuff, I think everything starts sure. to work a lot better. Uh, you guys went to the state tournament last year, 16th region champions, um, and I know it wasn't the outcome that you wanted. You, know, you guys lost to Connor in the first round, a solid team, but I know you guys wanted a better showing. How much does that drive you and drive this group to get back there and have maybe a little bit of redemption? Well, as soon as that game was over, we all huddled up in the outfield and we were talking to the seniors and stuff that were going, but we also talked to all the younger classmen, the juniors and stuff my age, that our goal was to get back. And we're gonna go back and we're, we wanna go back and prove ourselves. And I know we've got the 15th region in the draw this year. So, I mean, we've played some of those teams, Johnson Central, Lawrence County, all of them. And we've played pretty well against them this year. And, uh, but our main goal is to get back there and we wanna just go as long as we can. But uh, Winning region is nice. Everybody likes it, but the main goal is to win games at state. So you're signed with Ohio State. Uh, Going to go there to play baseball. You might get drafted. Have you thought about some options for your future? What What are you kind of looking at there? Well, I haven't really thought about it too much. I've just been kind of playing and 
kind of seeing what happens. I know the draft's coming up pretty soon, so I've talked to a few people and stuff. Oh, college is probably, for me, probably the better option for a catcher, a right-handed hitting catcher, that is. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, I, I'd always give it thought. I mean, at this time, I'm just kind of focused on the team and going back and winning all that stuff. So. And if, if you go to Ohio State, uh, after three years, you're eligible to get drafted mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Um, what do you plan on studying there? Uh, I was actually going to go in undecided because I haven't really decided. Mm -hmm. I was going to do something medical, but with baseball and stuff, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to juggle time. But, I mean, most of my backups are political science. So I was thinking that is probably something to look into. Cool. Sounds good. Jacob, wish you the best of luck the rest of the season. Thanks. Thank you. HTPT's two for the road. Zach, take it away. Uh, look at the Reds baseball, and this might be our All Reds two for the road it's edition. The All Reds edition. Uh, on Tuesday night, the Reds won a big game. It seemed like they kind of struggled in close games late, but uh, Brian Price did something interesting. Uh, Brian Pena gets on base with a hit, and then he brings in Michael Lorenzen to pinch run. Um, it was in the ninth inning, I believe, yep. of a game against Atlanta, and it puts him on first, and he showed some pretty good wheels when uh, Mezzarocco came up with a pinch hitter and ripped one into the corner, and Lorenzen just took off and scored from first. Uh, would have been a play at the plate. The, the relay was mishandled, so he, he slid anyway. He didn't really have to, but just kind of got to, to thinking that some managers that were famous for using starting pitchers as position players in a pinch were La Russa was famous for that, and Bobby Cox did it occasionally. Uh, Dusty Baker used to do it with Mike Leake because he could hit and, and run a little bit as well. But it's just kind of interesting to see that um, we've been critical of Brian Price in the past for not really grasping the complexities of the National League lineup and, and that kind of thing. And it just shows that he's kind of figuring out that what all he has at his disposal and that uh, he's been able to, to kind of use that a little bit. Wow, a little Brian Price look. And now you'll proceed to bash him. I'm going to even things <laughs> out. Yeah, we got to – Brian Price, don't get too excited. He put you up on a pedestal. Well, uh, not that you're, you're watching not Brian Price. Not really. Well, I tell you what, Michael Lorenzen benefits the Reds, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Accurate. You maybe, know what doesn't? more so when he's not pitching, even, maybe. I don't like what he's done at the top of the lineup. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't like when managers start fiddling with the lineup too much. I think, you know, you start overanalyzing things, and, and things get thrown out of whack. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the season, the first couple of weeks, Billy Hamilton and Joey Votto were the one-two punch at the top of the lineup, and it was working out rather well, mm -hmm. I thought. Uh, Billy Hamilton, when he did get on base, he was usually moved over uh, with Votto and, uh, coming up right after him. And it was just nice to have that kind of cushion, that kind of protection for Hamilton. And since Votto's been moved to the three hole, um, he's kind of cooled down. Mm -hmm. Billy Hamilton has really cooled off. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of thrown off the mojo a little bit that that, that lineup did have going for him. No question. If someone's he panicked a little bit after that Cardinals series, as we've talked about before, and that was also right around the time of the 77 F-bombs and all that. And When you're managing scared, then you're, you're probably going to do something that you don't want to do, and it's not going to work out sustainably long term. So Price has done some good things, mm -hmm. and he's done some questionable things. We'll see what kind of plays out for the Reds. But now, uh, How yeah. important is this year to him long term, do you think? I think it's very important. Yeah. Um, I think that the Reds' you know, front office – were so quick to hire Price mm -hmm. that they are going to stand by his side as long as they can. Right. Um, but I think this year, I think he needs to at least finish 500. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a losing record won't look very good two right. years in a row. No question. So I don't think he's on the hot seat yet, but they'll readdress that after the season. It's getting warm. Yeah, it's getting a little warm. Hmm. It's getting a little warm. It's going to get really warm here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, baseball and district, <laughs> baseball and softball district tournaments, region tournaments, real exciting time. Uh, I always enjoy covering the state tournament. So I don't know who's going to be there. We might make those predictions next time, uh, who's going to represent this region in Owensboro and in Lexington. Yeah. But for now, this is HTPT. We want to thank uh, Coach Ramsey and Jacob Barnwell for joining us. He's Zach Clemmy. I'm Aaron Snyder. As always, HTPT is sponsored by Fan and Automotive Family. See you next week.